Welcome back. All right, so some news of the day for all you fine people. The trade of Jacob Markstrom, not the only trade so far today, and it may not be the end of them. Uh, general managers, usually they'll wait until the Stanley Cup final is done. I know the NHL at times has not been all that happy about like big news breaking that kind of distracts from the playoffs. But being that the Stanley Cup final could go to June 24th, yeah, GMs don't have time to wait around for that. So uh, the Vancouver Canucks, we start here with Friedman signing a one-year extension with the Canucks worth league minimum of 775000 Mark Friedman's been a good depth defenseman for Vancouver, even stepped up in the playoffs a little bit there, and he looked good there too. So I, I think as a depth defenseman, I'm not saying he's going to be top four or anything, but as a depth defenseman, that's a good move. And so, yeah, the Canucks get Hronik signed and Friedman signed. So that video I did yesterday on the Canucks is just going to get more and more dated. I honestly, I'm happy about that. That's that's good. Some some movement going on is good, even if it's just uh, getting contracts signed with players. Now, on the movement side of things, Ty Delandria has been traded to San Jose, thus the San Jose garb. Uh, he's currently a restricted free agent. Now, Dallas gets back a 2025 fourth round pick. I've seen people online saying, oh, this is a fleecing. How? Delandria uh, had two goals, seven assists, nine points in 42 games. He turns 24 next month. So what you see is what you get with, with uh, Delandria. He likely needs more ice time than what he was going to get in Dallas. Dallas is a very talented, deep team. San Jose could use some energy. Delandria definitely provides that. He does have a little bit of offensive upside there as well. Trading him to San Jose gives him a chance to flourish. He's a restricted free agent, so San Jose can work out a deal with him. My guess is they probably announce a deal with them over the next couple of days. And, uh, yeah, I think both teams get what they want here. Uh, Dallas frees up a roster spot. And, again, Dallas has a, a, a pretty solid team there. So I, I don't think that losing Delandry is necessarily a huge deal. The fourth-round draft pick next year that they get back is actually Winnipeg's fourth-round draft pick. So, yeah, let me know your thoughts on that trade and how you feel about all that. Now, out of last night's game, Connor McDavid... He's, he's on that on that trajectory again towards all-time stats. And while I don't agree that just because a player's had a ton of points throughout the playoffs that they necessarily win the con Smythe, with Bobrovsky's numbers taking a nosedive over the last two games, I honestly don't know if you can make that same argument for Bobrovsky that you can make after Game 3. Um, and with McDavid breaking through and scoring a ton of points, Barkov hasn't been able to keep him under control. Uh, yeah, teams have a hard time keeping McDavid under control. 42 points uh, for McDavid puts him fourth on the all-time list for points in a playoff year. Uh, Gretzky had 47 in 1985. So do I think McDavid scores five points over the next two games should the Oilers force, force the seventh game? I mean, I, I don't think so necessarily, but I mean, he's been able to score a ton of points over the last two. Uh, Mario Lemieux had 44 points in 1991. And uh, Gretzky had 43 points in 1988. So at the very least, uh, McDavid's only three points away from passing Lemieux and ending up second on the all-time list for points in a playoff year. So, yeah, McDavid doing McDavid things. Uh, very impressive run by him. And now the Oilers are back in the series. All of a sudden, the conversations are about Bill Zito and the bottle throw-in last night, uh, which I talked about in the review. And how angry he was. Uh, and, you know, I, I get it. I totally get how, as a GM, you'd be absolutely livid because the team was up three games to nothing. Now it's three to two. Now you got to go back to Edmonton, and the doubt has to be creeping in, right? So that has to be a concern if you're Florida. So I totally get Bill Zito being ticked off. But the reason all that doubt's there is because McDavid's taking over the series. Uh, that one play there where he just skates through everybody, gives it over to Perry. Perry roofs it. Yeah, that's McDavid in a nutshell. So, yeah, we'll see whether or not the Oilers can keep that going. Keep in mind that on Friday we get Game 6, so there's the extra day off in between again. Um, and I, I really figure the extra day in between is because the travel between Florida and Edmonton being as it is and everything, yeah, it makes sense to have that extra day for, for travel. I get it. Uh, last night, Coachella Valley uh, lays the smackdown on Hershey. A 6-2 to two victory last night to, to win Game 3. And, of course, I wasn't able to watch and review that. Uh, but I will be able to watch and review Game 4 tomorrow night, which is also in Coachella Valley. Uh, the Firebirds will be looking to uh, go up three games to one. They don't want to go back to Hershey. They want to finish this at home. So if they can win Games 3, 4, and 5 at home, uh, that's it. It's it's all sealed. It's all done. So we'll see whether or not they can do that. But last night, Coachella Valley, uh, it, it wasn't close. So 
yeah, we'll see whether or not tomorrow night's close or if I need a bunch of Seattle magnets. Because remember, Coachella Valley, the Firebirds, that's Seattle's farm team, and Hershey is Washington's farm team. So the, the Markstrom trade, definitely Jacob was in on this and, and knew that was his likely destination. Uh, he's excited to join the Devils, already talking about how he's looking forward to, you know, bringing his family to New Jersey. He's also talked about, you know, how he's, he's you know, anxious to, to talk to the other Swedish players on the New Jersey Devils and that he's kind of familiar with the Hughes family via Quinn Hughes and now he gets to play with his other two brothers, which is kind of cool. And it is. So Markstrom, uh, I don't think he'll have a tr have any trouble getting comfortable with the New Jersey Devils. It feels like it's... It's a really good fit. It's the right move, I think, for New Jersey and for Calgary. I've already seen they were fleeced. They didn't get enough. Da, 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 da. The people who say this, I always get a kick out of because they can't tell you what another team would have traded for that player. They can't tell you which team would have made that deal. And the Flames reportedly did shop Markstrom around, and the best deal was the one that New Jersey offered them. So the, well, they should have gotten this, but that wasn't offered. You can't call a team and go, so you're giving us this player, you're giving us this draft pick, thanks, uh, we'll be sending him over in his contract. It's just not how it works. So, And as I said in that trade video too, everybody always overvalues what you're going to get for a goaltender. Always. It's just it's just the reality that goaltenders, the return is usually kind of underwhelming. What it does for Calgary is it means you've got Dan Vladar, you've got Dustin Wolf. that's your goaltending tandem for next season, and you saved yourself some money on Markstrom's contract. Wolf looked pretty good down the stretch for the Flames, so I, I think this is a trade that benefits both teams. And I know that's weird in this day and age where there has to be a winner and a loser of every deal, but I think I think for this one, I think it's a winner for both. Uh, I wanted to throw this into this video because we've been talking about cap-friendly and cap-friendly going away. Uh, Elite Prospects adding something that they, they tweeted about today or X'd about or Z'd or with X or whatever about, uh, where they've added cap info to player profiles. So when you're looking up NHL players on uh, Elite Prospects, and that cap number and all that information is via a partnership with Puckpedia. So Puckpedia, the, the site that it looks like is going to be, you know, encompassing the salary cap needs of fans and, I mean, I, mean, I guess GMs and players and agents and everybody, right? Because everybody uses cap friendly. Uh, Puckpedia really, you know... Doing the right thing here and partnering up with Elite Prospects is a really good move. Elite Prospects, a good business of their own. Uh, again, it's a website that I use a lot. And with salary cap information on all the player profiles, that's actually kind of kind of a nice addition. So, yeah, I'll be using that more for that reason. Uh, the San Jose Sharks raising some eyebrows today. They've picked up Barkley Goudreau. I will agree with this being an odd move. That the New York Rangers clearly you know, wanting to be out from under Barkley Goudreau's contract, and San Jose gets him off the hook for free. So the, it, it is weird that San Jose probably could have got the Rangers to throw in a draft pick with Goudreau's contract. Uh, but either way, it's a $3.64 million cap hit for three more years for San Jose, meaning the New York Rangers, rather than buying out Goudreau and being on the hook for two-thirds of this amount, and then you've got to you, you double the amount of time and all that, uh, now they, they just save all that money. That money's gone. So the New York Rangers likely very, very happy right now with the San Jose Sharks. The Sharks have added Delandre and Goudreau to solidify their bottom six a little bit there, which they need. Um, San Jose's offensive depth this season was not, not near good enough. And so adding Goudreau and Delandria, I think, is a smart move. But I am I will agree with people that it is kind of surprising that San Jose would take on Goudreau's contract and not get any sweeteners with that from the New York Rangers, who probably would have been willing to add some sort of sweetener to trade Goudreau straight up to the San Jose Sharks. But let me know your thoughts in the comments section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.